Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. Alrighty, just a quick note from me. This video didn't really have a lot of imagery available since the locomotive was never built. And also, there's certainly no video of it. So I'm going to fill in with other experimental types throughout the video. And we'll just call it even that way. Alrighty, so enjoy this video. The B&O Railroads W1, the greatest steam locomotive that was never built. Enjoy. While the Pennsylvania Railroad was broadcasting publicity about its forthcoming S1 locomotive, the Baltimore and Ohio engineers were busy working on an equally complicated and immense machine. This experiment was a radical 16-cylinder constant torque steam locomotive, which was going to be the last word in steam power and a challenge to the upstart diesel locomotive. The classification for this experiment was going to be W1, and it was a strange and enormous streamliner, and it weighed 400,000 pounds at a long, drawn-out wheelbase of 422224 wheel arrangements. The W1 was rated to be 5,000 horsepower, and this giant was believed capable of handling 14 Pullman cars at a sustained speed of 100 miles an hour. Its 32 power impulses for each revolution of the steam motors was supposed to give it the smooth running qualities of a multi-cylinder automobile. And the removal of all reciprocating parts was supposed to stop any vibration throughout the locomotive and train set. The locomotive's streamlining was designed by artist Otto Cooler. Most unfortunately for the B&O, its public relations department was quick to tell the world about their new engine. So eager to be ahead of the competition, the road sent out press releases accompanied by a print of Otto, Otto Cooler's drawing. Premature advertising and promotion was to cause the B&O considerable embarrassment because the super locomotive was never completed. And earlier, the road had abandoned the idea of a duplex locomotive in 1938 when their George Emerson proved unsatisfactory. Although other railroads continued to experiment with steam power for several more years, the Pennsylvania Railroad for starters and the Chesapeake and Ohio, all of them were ultimately forced to admit defeat in the wake of dieselization. And those decisions ultimately came down to money because had the Pennsylvania Railroad, for instance, had the money to continue the S2, I really think they had something with that specific design. So when you look at the artist's rendering, it almost looks like a standard 484 locomotive. But what you actually see is that four quadruple two four wheel arrangement, which is actually each driving axle that is independent of the others. And that design was done so as to prevent wheel slippage on startup and what have you. So each drive axle of the 2222 wheel sets has its own bezeler steam engine containing four steam cylinders tied to a set of gears with a gear ratio of 55 to 19. And this is why this experimental W1 engine is often referred to as the bezeler type. And this bezeler setup gave the driver a virtually continuous power stroke that was almost the same as an electric motor on a diesel. And when you compare this arrangement to our normal power strokes per conventional steam locomotive, the advantage is not getting wheel slip when starting the train and quicker acceleration. And not having main rods or side rods, there is no need to have counterweights on the drivers that basically will stop the locomotive from pounding the rails, which will save in track maintenance. Each Bezler's uh, cylinder was 10 and a half inches by 8 inches. So William Bezler, the man who invented these particular cylinders for this project, and his brother George, believed that the power potential of steam was greatly overlooked and dedicated themselves to designing devices that could unlock and harness that power. Other features to this locomotive was the cutoff and forward reverse position of the valve gear, and those were to be regulated from the locomotive cab by means of electric pneumatic control. Design weight of the W1 was 400,000 pounds, with 260,000 pounds of that weight on the drivers. The starting tractive effort was calcul calculated to be 72,500 pounds, and that gave it a factor of adhesion of 3.6. Now, this is enough if there is continuous torque output to the drivers. The boiler was an Emerson water tube type with 775 square feet of heating surface in the firebox with a total heating surface of 5,800 square feet. Operating pressure was 350 PSI, which is much higher than most B&O steam power during that time. The superheater was to have 1,580 square feet of heating surface and it was equipped with a feed water heater. 
The Bessler steam engines operated at a guaranteed 14 pounds per hour or power hour. So when the engine is developing 5,000 horsepower, the boiler is generating 70,000 pounds per hour of steam. The drivers are suspended by outside frames and spring rigging that would allow it to be very flexible. Since each driving axle was independent, it would be able to swing and follow any curvature on the railroad. Unlike the large 8 or 10 coupled big steam where the driving wheels were coupled in a single rigid configuration, a counting of the driving rods. Driver size was set at 60 inches. And the engineers at the B&O even planned for breakdowns. The outside bearings could be removed and a single driver set that might have had a problem could easily be dropped in, into a pit for repairs or replacement. The W1 experimental was to be 112 feet long with a general appearance of a 484 steam locomotive. It had a water 2 firebox and the assigned number of the series was going to be 5800 and this being the first it was to carry the class number of 5800 as well and as we already learned the plan was to then streamline the boiler for looks and wind resistancy uh, and for efficiency and once again auto cooler now is it cooler or is it kyler you all let me know in the comments below and he was obviously engaged for the design as we mentioned earlier in that time frame, Upstart EMD was starting to come out with a working diesel electric that seemed to also have a lot of promise, and as it turned out, it took over the industry. It was expected that the W1 could run 15% more efficient than comparable engines out there at that time. And once again in that time, Superpower Steam was a strong player. Massive articulated engines ruled mountain grades, i.e. the Allegheny, the Big Boys, the Challengers, etc. And with bigger yet to come when World War II unleashed massive tonnage requirements. Despite the Great Depression, these were still glory years for railroads. And basically, the B&O's W1 experimental design crashed in the in the blueprints or development because its president daniel willard had to choose between a tentative advance in locomotive power and design or the financial security of his railroad and its people and this is backed by the fact that the bno railroad historically carried heavy debt and the depression took the bno financially into a very bad place and there were several times during the depression that the bno went into bankruptcy but only to its president mr willard in his leadership kept that from happening and that also could be attributed to president roosevelt's efforts to keep the country afloat with his big new deal so you combine that with the uncertain expenses that these experiments locomotives uh, bring and experiments still need to be done and along with the emd's diesel electric already proven itself the fate of this b w1 number 5800 was sealed and it remained on the history shelf and it will forever go down as another good idea that never saw the light of day so with that the following specifications apply to the bno railroads w1 experimental locomotive nicknamed the bezler the overall length of the locomotive was 112 feet the tractive effort was 72,500 pounds the factor of adhesion was 3.6 Boiler pressure was 350 PSI. The firebox was an Emerson water tube type with 775 square feet. The locomotive weight was 400,000 pounds. Adhesion weight over the drivers was 260,000 pounds. The cylinders were 16 at 10.5 by 8 inches each of the Bessler type. The tender could hold 23 tons of coal and 22,000 22, gallons of water. The horsepower was 5,000 at 100 miles per hour, so draw your conclusions there as to what the top speed is. Who knows, but it's certainly more than 100 miles an hour. And the railroad classification was 5800. And with that, we'll wrap up this video, and I shall thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit the like button. And if you've not subscribed, please do so. Both features help the channel grow immensely. And also, visit our print shop at nickelplate limited on etsy.com and we thank you once again